Perhaps we forget that even Earth, our only home, has an expiration date. In about a billion years, our planet will grow too hot. The oceans will vanish. The air will no longer be breathable. Life as we know it will disappear. But that moment isn't what should concern us most. The real question is, will we be ready when that time comes? From the beginning, we have been explorers. We've crossed deserts, climbed mountains, and endured the harshest corners of our planet. We have ventured into the unknown, not just for survival, but for discovery. Now our journey leads us away from the world we know, toward the stars. For decades, Mars has been the center of our dreams, a world not too far from Earth, similar in size and within the realm of reach. It seemed like the next logical step, but the closer we examine it, the more inhospitable it appears. Mars is not the promise it once seemed. Its atmosphere is thin, so thin that it can't shield us from cosmic radiation. There is no magnetic field to deflect solar particles. The surface is exposed. The temperatures are brutal. At night, they can plummet to minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And while we have found evidence of ancient rivers and lakes, Mars today is dry and lifeless. Living on Mars would mean constant danger. Every structure would need to be pressurized, insulated, and buried for protection. Every drop of water recycled, every breath manufactured. Power would depend on solar panels, which can easily be covered by Martian dust, reducing their effectiveness. A simple sandstorm could shut down critical systems for days. Terraforming Mars, making it Earth-like, has been suggested. Ideas have included detonating nuclear bombs at the poles to release trapped carbon dioxide and create a greenhouse effect. But the science doesn't hold. There simply isn't enough CO2 in the Martian atmosphere or surface to meaningfully change the climate. Even if we unleashed all of it, the pressure would still be far too low to sustain liquid water. So we must ask, are we putting too much hope into a planet that might never be truly livable? Further out, far beyond Mars, lies a moon, a world wrapped in mystery, shrouded in orange haze. Titan, the largest moon of Saturn. It is in many ways as unwelcoming as Mars, and yet, paradoxically, it might offer us a better chance. Titan has a dense atmosphere. In fact, it's even thicker than Earth's. That means better protection from radiation and a more stable pressure that doesn't require pressure suits just to walk around. Warm suits, yes, but not full pressurized armor. While the surface temperature on Titan is unimaginably cold, close to minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit, it is consistent. There are no sandstorms, no atmosphere stripping solar winds. Instead, there is calm. Titan's sky is filled with nitrogen, just like Earth, and its surface is scattered with lakes, rivers, and seas. Not of water, but of methane and ethane. These hydrocarbons could be harvested for fuel. And while there's almost no oxygen in the atmosphere, there is water ice just below the surface. With energy, we can break that ice apart to extract hydrogen and oxygen. In this way, Titan offers something rare in the solar system, abundance. The Cassini mission revealed that beneath Titan's frozen crust may lie a vast subsurface ocean of liquid water. If accessible, this could supply life support in agriculture. Titan also spends most of its orbit within Saturn's powerful magnetic field, offering further protection from cosmic radiation. Of course, challenges remain. Titan is nearly 900 million miles from Earth. Any mission would be a one-way trip, or at least a journey with no promise of return. Communication delays are longer. Resupply missions are costly. The sun, so distant, offers little usable energy. But this is where Titan's natural resources make the difference. Methane, for example, can be used in combustion-based energy systems. It can power reactors and fuel rockets. And since Titan is already cold, storing cryogenic fuels becomes easier. Hydrogen, harvested from ice, completes the fuel cycle. What about light? Photosynthesis needs it. Farming on Titan would require artificial light, either from nuclear sources or high-efficiency LEDs. Crops would grow in sealed, heated greenhouses, 
But this is a challenge we already face on Mars. And so the comparison becomes clearer. Mars is close but barren. Titan is distant but rich. Mars offers familiarity. Titan offers potential. Mars is exposed. Titan is protected. And perhaps most importantly, Mars is a world that may never support a stable ecosystem. Titan, on the other hand, already has the building blocks. Organic chemistry is active on Titan. Complex molecules form in its atmosphere. Some scientists believe that if life could exist in such conditions, Titan is one of the most likely places to find it. So maybe as we plan our next steps, we shouldn't just ask where we can go, but where we can grow. Establishing a colony on Titan won't be easy. It will take decades of planning, years of travel, and generations of settlers who may never see Earth again. But it is possible. And in the vast silence of space, Titan might just be the place where the human story continues. Not because it's easy, but because it's right.